What the heck? Togon. It is time for the second installment of... Monday Math Nuggets. F*** yeah. And today we're going to be doing something that was asked of me in the previous... Monday Math... About infinite products. So the question was... Or the 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 the, the, hypo the conjecture was that since any fraction with a finite number of factors in its numerator and a finite number of factors in its denominator with all odd numbers in the top and at least one even factor in the denominator will never be an integer, right? Because any odd divided by even number can't be an integer. Therefore, that if even if you have an infinite product where the entire numerator is all odd factors and the denominator has at least one even factor, that will never be an integer. And I have a counterexample to that claim. So before we, you know, get into it, let's just restate the question so that we understand what's being asked. Of course, I have my trusty cup of joe. Just got back from the gym. What's going to help build muscle better than caffeine? Am I right, ladies? So the question was asked by this person. So the question is, first, let's consider a finite product. So we, oh, God, I got to get new pens. Oh my goodness, these pens are awful. So. We start with some finite product using this pi notation that I hope you're all familiar with, right? The sigma symbol is for sums, the pi notation is for products. So say we start with like n equals 1, and we go up to some number n, right? Some number capital N, right? And it's some number of terms in the numerator and some number of terms in the denominator. With a n odd for all n and b n even for at least one n. So every single a n is an odd number, and every single b n could be odd except for one, because any even factor will make the product and the denominator even. The point is, is that this finite product will never, so we'll call this, say we call this little p for, for finite product, so it's quite clear, uh, trivial, little p is not a member of the integers, or the or the the natural numbers, right? Because any integer could be written as itself divided by one, which means the denominator of that fraction is an odd number. Since there are no even numbers in the numerator, by the uh, by assumption, there's no even number to cancel with the one even number in the denominator of this product, because at least one of these b ends is even, right? So. There's no way that this finite product could be an integer. And the claim is that if we change to capital P, meaning infinite product, and we go forever and ever and ever and have infinitely many terms, that this will still be the case. That P will not be a member of the natural numbers ever. There's no way to get even an infinite product of all odd c factors in the numerator and at least one even factor in the denominator to become an integer. Now, my counterexample to this is quite a nice one, but it's a counterexample in that every bn is even in my counterexample. So that means infinitely many. Now I haven't been able to find a counterexample where only finitely many are even, or when, you know, that not even all of them are even, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming my counterexample is based on the fact that all the bn's will be even and all the an's will be odd, and I will still get an integer from this infinite product. So I hope that's a satisfactory uh, counterexample to you, but it is a counterexample nonetheless. The only restriction that I was told was that it can't be a telescoping product, so that it can't have a bunch of cancellations. The only thing is I don't think a solution could exist with a telescoping one, because that would require reciprocals to cancel each other, just like negatives telescope in a, in a telescoping sum. But that will never cancel the at least one even factor in the denominator, because there's no even numbers in the numerator to cancel with it, right? There's no factor of two in the top to cancel with any factors of two in the bottom. So this is not true. This is a false statement because it can be a member of the integers, and after I get a new, more functioning pen, we can actually see that. So, what's my counterexample? So I'm going to actually tell you what the terms are. I'm not going to, I'd have to think about how to actually rigorously define this, but it's, I can give you the recursion, the recursion of it. So the first thing is a1 equals three, and b1 equals four, and a2 equals five, and b2 equals four. So the product of the first two terms is 3 over 4 times 5 over 4, which is going to give us exactly 15 
over 16. Notice there are only odd numbers in the numerator and there are only even numbers in the denominator. Now what we're going to do is to continue the pattern we did here. We kept the same denominator, but the numerators are one less and one more than the denominator. So we're going to do the same thing here. So our next term is 15 over 16, a3 is 15, and, a, and b3 is 16. Oh my god, all of these markers, I need to... I need to go to Staples and get more markers. So we're switching to a very bright green now. I hope this shows. So now we have, ooh, that's nice. We have 15 over 16, and we're simply going to multiply it by 17 over 16, which is going to give us 255 over 256. Consider this term and simply multiply it by a number with the same denominator but two more in the numerator. So we get 255 over 256 times 257 over 256. Now I'm not going to do this, but I think you can see what's actually going on here. This is exactly equal to 256 minus 1 times 256 plus 1, which is going to give a difference of squares, which is 256 squared minus 1 squared, all divided by 256 squared. And as you can see, each of these terms is actually of that form, right? This is 16 squared minus 1 squared over 16 squared. Obviously, 1 squared is just 1, so I'm not going to write the 1 squared anymore. And this one is quite clearly 4 squared minus 1 over 4 squared, right? And in each successive term, right, this, this, is, this is the first term in the product, this is the second term, this is the third term, this is the fourth term, and this is the fifth term. And so each time you're just increasing the, the power of 4 in the denominator, I suppose you could, you could think of it. But essentially what it is is that each partial product, I guess that's what we call it, right, a partial product, each partial product of this infinite product is always of the form x squared minus 1 over x squared. And what happens to this as x goes to infinity? Well, x squared and x squared minus 1 don't differ by very much. They differ by exactly 1, which means when x squared gets enormous, this thing, the thing of this form, will go to 1 as x goes to infinity, which it clearly is, right? After this one, I'm going to multiply this by 256 squared plus 1 over 256 squared, right? And it's just going to get closer and closer to 1. And so I have provided for you, my good friend, a counterexample to your uh, conjecture that an infinite product of fractions where the numerator is entirely odd factors and the denominator has at least one even factor will never go to an integer. I hope this is satisfactory because you'll just simply keep doing the recursion, right? The next term in this will be 256 squared plus 1 over 256 squared. And so this will give 256 to the power of 4 minus 1 over 256 to the power of 4. And that will be exceptionally close to 1. This, this uh, product gets very, very close to 1 very quickly. So that is my counterexample. I think it's a lovely question, right? It's a good way to think about it. And it, you know what? The, the thing about it is a lot of things don't hold intuitively once you jump from finite math to infinite math. So it wasn't a bad conjecture, right? It just simply wasn't true. And you can come up with a counterexample. The real challenge, I think, would be to come up with a counterexample where either not all of them are even, like I did, so still infinitely many maybe, but not all of them, or maybe even finitely many even factors in the denominator. That would be the real challenge. Naturally, if you can show one that only has a single even factor in the denominator and the rest are odd, then that would be proof positive for all the other things, right? Like, I sort of took it to the extreme, where all of them, all infinitely many of them, are, are even. Um, and there's not actually a single factor of anything other than two in any of these denominators, right? They're all... there's not a single odd factor, right? So I could have done even numbers that had odd factors in them. There's not a single odd factor in these denominators at all. It's all powers of two. And in the denominator, it's always one less than a power of two. That's essentially the idea. And that product will tend to one, right? Because as numbers get bigger, dividing that number minus one by that number will tend to one, because those, the difference in these two things is going to become incredibly negligible very quickly. So I hope that's a satisfactory counterexample to you. Um, I enjoyed thinking about it, and it was a very neat little problem. So if you have any other cool conjectures that you want to share with me that I should try to prove or disprove, just let me know. Bye-bye. Um, uh,